So the next thing we have on our list here is templates. Now, when I say templates, you may want to think of something like a design template, like a, you know, like maybe like if you're an Elementor, you know, you pull it out of like one of those pre-designed kit things where you have, you know, a page that just has like different sections and everything like that. Um, those are not the templates that we're going to be specifically talking about here. I would call them more like a design library or design template library, or whatever. Again, the language is difficult. Templates specifically as they're you know, known throughout many different page builders and even like in core are pieces of the actual uh, like functionality and like the WordPress like setup. So we talked about pages before we talked about posts and everything, right? So there's this concept that there are certain web page types, we'll call it because I don't want to say a page. There are certain types of views that you see on the internet that could kind of be categorized and created via, for instance, an archive or a single. Um, obviously, we know about headers, we know about footers, you know, the tops and bottoms of, of web pages. A 404 page, which is, you know, the error page when you go to somewhere and it says, hey, you know, page can't be found. Search results is another one because there's built in search to WordPress. So you need to display, you need to have almost like a, you need to have a template for your search results. And then also like a section, which we'll get into. We'll go into each one of these individually here. But the idea is that these templates, right? So you have pages, then you have posts, and your templates are kind of what brings all of that a little bit more together and makes everything a lot more dynamic. So maybe a slightly uh, too vague of an overview, but let's look at some examples here real quick, and I'll try to explain it to you, and then we will kind of build something on our little demo here. Uh, that we have going on. So if we're looking at archive first, archive is admittedly probably the toughest one. And the reason it's the toughest one is because again, when WordPress was created, like, I don't even know if it had pages at, at the very first, because it was a blogging platform. So you didn't really need pages, you needed like a place to put your blog post, and you needed a place to show all of your blog posts, right? The place to show all of your blog posts is generally called an archive. Now I'm saying blog post there, but it, it doesn't it doesn't need to be a blog post. It could be any type of uh, post type like we've talked about to this point. So let's just go look at some examples. So if we go over to wordpress.com slash blog, uh, there's a little bit of nuance here that I will I will get into, but this could kind of be a blog. This could kind of be an archive page, depending on how you architect your your situation. It could also just be a regular page, but if it's an archive page, or if it's an archive rather, then it's going to show everything and you can set it up that way and utilize a template rather than, you know, creating a new page. Um, again, the other way is to create a new page and then put these different types of things on here and just build it out as like a standalone page that has queries and has dynamic data on it. There's two different schools of thought there. Um, and it probably depends on, you know, your, your setup and the way that you want to do things. Uh, but specifically that, that is the, the main difference there and the main different ways you can do it. The blog is tough, I will say that. The reason the blog is tough is because if you click into one of these, which we'll talk about here in a second, I'm slightly skipping ahead. In WordPress.com, they are almost certainly using an archive. The way that I know that is because if we take a look at these permalink structures up here, okay? So let's take a look at this one and this one, right? We have WordPress.com slash blog, which is this page, right? It's built out. It has more or less all of the posts, right? It's like a, it's an archive of all of the posts. That's what, that's where the word came from. So then if we go and we click into one, right? And I'm, I'll, I'll give you, I will spoil this because we're not going here yet, but you need to understand what we were just on is an archive. What we see here is one single post, you know, from that archive, from the blog. So that is called a single page. That's not really, it might be a single page, might be a single, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's a single, okay? We'll talk about that. I'll show you how to do it, but it's a single. Now, just as a quick thing, the reason I know that they're kind of using an archive here is if you look in the permalink structure, and I just know how WordPress op operates. So you have wordpress.com slash blog slash the slug, like the, the, the permalink structure slug, which is really like, this is the, this is the slug right here. WordPress, WordPress themes, April 24, 24, that's the name, that's the slug for this article. And then it has like the title in there. So if we could just, if I could just give you an example, if we go back to our permalinks on our site, they would have something like this going on right here, this day, day and name. 
So they have this. Well, actually, technically, it'd probably be more like this, actually. It'd be a custom structure. It would be uh, blog slash uh, day and then name, uh, wherever post name is. So this is the structure that they kind of have going on here. And you can kind of fill in the blanks, right? So it's blog. They have like blog written there. They're showing that rather than just doing the post name. Then they have day, then they have post name. Now there's ways you can do this. I'm going to tell you right now from a beginner standpoint, like don't even worry about this. Just leave it on post name. It doesn't matter. Your, your, your default posts will just be, you know, the, the, the post name rather than have blog or anything in there. But when you're using this, you're probably going to utilize this for other custom post types because that's why you're watching this because you want to do stuff outside of that post. Um, I'm just trying to give you the inside baseball on how this is how this is done as an example. And there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Um, what I would say is if you are if you feel like you're doing way too much work, you're, there's probably an easier way to do it. So that's that's the main takeaway from some of this, and that's the main reason that people get into dynamic data and actually utilize it uh, to make their lives better. So. Hopefully that example gave you a little bit. Let's look at a different example because we're talking about movies. So if you go to like AMC theaters, right, and then you click on their movie section, right, there is going to be a page that's slash movies. Now, in my mind, and I'm going to again explain this to you, is this is a, it is a good example. I don't know what they're using, how they're using it, but this is a good example of what an archive could be as well with a custom post type, let's say, in our case, movies, which will do something similar here to kind of give you an idea. So it's slash movies. That means that there's a couple things to really understand and take away from looking at something like this and studying what they're doing here. The first thing is that on this page is general, like the general list of movies. It doesn't need to be just a straight up list. It could be anything. But the idea is when a user comes to slash movies, navigates there, clicks on a link, whatever, they're expecting to see all of the movies. Like that, that just makes sense, okay? So you're seeing like all the movies that, that are here, for more or less. And obviously there's other pieces going along here, but we could talk about that. But more or less, you're on the movies page, you're expecting to see the movies. Okay, perfect. Well, one thing to note uh, real quick, this is a small detail, but and you'll, it'll make sense when we create the archive, is that if this is an archive, you don't get to necessarily, I'm not gonna say you can't, but you don't necessarily get to easily change the slug of the archive. If we think back to when we created a page, it had the option to create a new page, give it a title, and then also change the slug. So for instance, we could have a page called contact, but the slug could be let's talk or something, right? So this could this page could be like the contact page, but up here it could say let's talk. That is uh, like fine and very easy to do, and you can you can do whatever you want there, right? There's different you know different reasons you could do different things. It doesn't matter right now, but you could do that with an archive. The reason remember when I when we created the post types and I said I usually make it plural. This is the reason why because you have really two options. Okay, you might have more, but there's really two main options. The first option is you create a post type and then you want to show all of them, right? So let's say movies, right? So we created our movies post type and then we want to show all of our movies on a page or like just on a web page. Well, if you want it to be slash movies, then you're, if, you, if you named it singular, right? Like if that slug was singular, like slash movie, then if you want it to be plural, the way to do it, and this is the way that I started doing it, is I went over to pages and I created a new page called movies and then I went in and I created a, um, I created a page, and that page had like queries and things on it like that, and it was just called movies. But here's the thing that happens, is now you've created another, you've created another like entity, another thing, without even knowing it, right? Because all of your movies look like slash movie slash Inception because we named it singular, okay? And that is a problem. And I should probably kind of like explain this, this to you a little bit better. Let's look at something a little deeper first and then we'll come back to the surface on this. Like we're talking about here, movies, right? So we're talking about that is our archive in this case. The reason I know that is because if I click into one of these specifically, right? So I click into this one here. Now this is a single page. I know we're talking about two things at once here, but they kind of go so tightly together that, you know, it's it's very it's very important that you understand both. 
So there's archive and single. This is our single. Anytime you see a blog post page, like the specific URL to a blog post, the specific URL to a movie like this, the specific URL to a specific team member, um, the specific URL to potentially a specific service, those types of things, um, if they're set up in this, in this manner, those are singles, right? So those are single templates. Like you create a template for the single and then everything is, dyna is dyna dynamically generated. Now, if you have been doing this manually, you probably would have had to do something like create this as a page and name it the fall guy and then put all this information in here. And then when you want to add another movie or another service, then you create the page again and you duplicate the page and then you change all the information manually. So if you had 20 things, you're sitting there for hours and hours and you are copying and pasting a bunch of stuff. You are not going to have to do that anymore. Okay. So let me just show you as an example. If I click on a couple more of these, we see the Fall Guy, we see Star Wars, we see Challengers, right? These are all, these are all like operating off of the same template. When you look at them side by side, you obviously know that they're operating off the same template. I'll give you one more piece before we get into this as well, is that your question may be like, and let's see if we, okay, here's a good example already. Look, so you see how like the Fall Guy, right, has certain pieces that are similar if we look at that and star wars back to back it has this header image it has like the title in the same spot it has get tickets but what doesn't it have it doesn't have this rotten tomatoes right here right the fall guy doesn't have this rotten tomatoes i'm sorry fall guy does and star wars doesn't so you're asking well mark how do i delete that how do i get rid of that i will show you how to do that and the concept it might be different in different builders but the concept is like dynamic visibility so depending on it's, it's conditions, dynamic visibility, like whatever you want to call it there. It's like, don't worry about that. You don't have to physically delete it out of the template or do anything. It's more of like, if this movie has that, then show it. If it doesn't, then don't show it. Okay. So there's not, you're, you, have to, you have to take your mind and you have to like pull it out of the idea of independently managing every single bit of information on these, these web pages because they're no longer pages. They are templated singles okay so we'll talk about singles in a second archives admittedly are a little bit more uh confusing especially with the situation here in the in the url bar and how we do that i'm going to show you how i do it i'm also going to show you real quick how to turn it on or off depending on what you want to do all right so let's just come back in here let me try to teach you some stuff uh like on the on the actual demo the first thing i want to do is i want to come back into acf and go to post types if i come over to movies there's a setting in here Okay, and if we come down and we look at the visibility, the URLs and all this stuff, there is a setting right here. And actually it looks like by default, interestingly enough, on uh, in ACF, if you go to URLs and you come down, archive has an item archive that can be customized with an archive template file in your theme, right? Now, this is interesting because if it's off, then that means there will not be a archive by default, that is slash movies in this case. If you want that, then you should turn it on. In my case, a lot of times I kind of like that. Uh, but again, you can pick this is the option. Okay, I'm going to give you the option now that you see this. Okay, there are two options. Okay, they more or less kind of accomplish the same thing. But there are reasons to do one or do the other, which we will try to get into here. If you have archive switched off, let's say you let's say your goal is to show a, a web page, right? Show a screen that has all of the movies on it. You have two options, at least, okay? The first option is you leave this off, you go to pages, you add a new page, you call it movies, and then you design the page how you want with dynamic data, preferably and queries and all that sort of stuff, which, which I'll show. The other option is you turn this on, you now have an archive, you do not create a page. Instead, you create an archive template and you design that archive template as your movies page because it will automatically do that. I personally like that way better because in a lot of ways it scales a little bit better. It's a little bit more cohesive, but it depends really on what you want to do for a lot of different reasons that I'm not going to, I can't really super get into because there are a lot of like corner cases and things. What I'm going to show you, I'm going to stick to the point of this video series, the dynamic data, and in this case, specifically the templating and how that works. So what I'm going to do 
is in movies here, right here. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add archive. Now it asks if you want to add an archive slug. I'm pretty sure if I press save changes, it's just going to automatically make it the one that it is. Like, so for instance, like it's just going to make it movies. So let's go and take a look at this. If we come back over here, we don't have any navigation or anything, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say slash movies, if I could spell. Okay. So this is interesting, right? So we have archives movies. Now this is just a standard looks like shit template here because there's nothing really going on. There's no way to kind of like show what's kind of going on or anything like that. But you can kind of see already that just the way that kind of like default WordPress and like the, the, the ecosystem of WordPress handles things that this is what an archive is. I didn't do anything to set this up. Notice, Let me, I really need to hit on this point, okay? There is no, there's nothing over here. This portfolio thing was created with those plugins that we bought, that we got on there about we'll delete that we'll delete contact there is no pages other than like a home page and this is not the home page the home page is just this random thing we're working on this is an archive it is not a page it is not going to show up in your pages you will not know that it's there from a page perspective it's really important to understand this if you choose to go the archive route it is it is better in a lot of ways you are it's not the same as a page like that's not how it works remember our pages just to give you a little bit of insight most of the pages that I build, there's not a ton, there's not really a ton of pages on there because a page is just such, such a basic thing. Like it's a home page, about page, contact page. Um, you could have more, you could have other like landing pages and things like that if you did it that way, but you don't have to. There's the point is that there's, there's not going to be as many pages as you think. Like if you've ever been in a WordPress website, if you've built one or you've, you've, you've been inside one that has like 200 pages. Um, to my experience, that is not the norm. Okay, <laughs> like you don't you don't want to handle it like that. You do not do not want to manage uh, data in that fashion. Okay, so that's why I tend to try to stick to the archives and the singles and like the you know the actual custom post type and that type of route that we're talking about here. So we, what did we do? We just flipped the switch and now we have an archive for movies. And by default, it kind of just shows like archive movies and it shows the Dark Knight and you know all it shows all the movies by default because that's what it's meant to do. Well, now you're asking the question, okay, well, that is cool-ish, maybe. Maybe you have some questions. If you have them, leave them in the comments. But that's cool, but I don't want this, right? I don't just want like a page, right, like a blank page. And again, this is tough because we're not operating off of like a theme or anything. I don't want to like distract you with other things. I just want to show you the functionality piece. There, the, the archive for movies is going to have everything in it. But you're probably, again, wondering, well, how do I how do I adjust this though? Like, I, if it's not a page, then how do I change it? Well, that's a great question. I'm going to show you kind of in bricks, but again, it's gonna it's gonna depend on what builder you're using. But what you're looking for, because most builders have them, you're looking for templates. In Elementor, it's up in the um, it's in like the theme builder, and you create a new template. More or less, this is going to be the exact same type of thing. Okay. So in bricks specifically, we go to bricks, we go to templates. Again, if you're an Elementor or whatever, find the templates thing, okay? Or look up another video talking about templates in Elementor specifically. But the concepts here are what's important because you could apply those to any builder in the future, even like core and stuff like that, depending on what things are named like. So templates, you wanna add a new template. And then I'm gonna show you this over here. These are some of the ones that you've seen, right? So there's So we talked about header and footer slightly, but those are like the top of the website, the bottom of the website, right? We talk about single section we'll get to pop up you know we kind of we can get to that too um search results air page right what we want in this specific case is archive and this is i'll tell you exactly how i do this so i select a new template type archive and then i say normally i just say like archive um it doesn't it doesn't really matter how you name this but like i would say like movies um archive or you could name it you can name it the other way around it doesn't really matter as long as you know that this template is going to render. You're going to you're going to set it to render. But the idea here is you're creating an archive for the post type. Okay, and you don't need to worry about this permalink here in bricks. That's not necessary um, because that's never really going to show. If you do this right, that's never going to show up. So movies and archive or archive movies, whatever. But just know that this is the archive for movies. Okay, so then you publish it, and now you go into edit it. All right, now. This is very important because this is gonna this is gonna show us how, like, to kind of create all this. I'm gonna do something super standard here. I'm just gonna add a section container. 
I'm going to add a heading right, where is it, uh, here. And you can do this different ways. There's easier ways to do it. There's different ways to do it. But I'm showing you like the most powerful way to kind of do it like yourself with all these. Um, for, for this point, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something different in a second, but I'm going to say our new, um, archive, um, because I want to show you how this, how this, uh, how this gets handled, but this is our new movie archive. Okay. And then beneath that, I'm just going to put a, uh, actually I'll go over just to save a little bit of time here. I'm going to go over to bricks and uh, edit this and I will just grab our little block here which we could do some different stuff with but I will just spare you for right now. I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna bring it over here and paste it in here. I'm gonna allow that, cool, okay. So just as an example here, what I've done is I've created a new movie archive. Again, it looks like shit but the point is that I need to explain to you how this is working first. We've created a new movie archive. This is our template, our archive template for movies that we're gonna that we're gonna assign it okay but we're designing it right now we're just setting it up what we did was we brought over the little cards that we built before right for our query and we're gonna go to the query loop specifically for this because we have an issue we don't we don't want is we don't want the query meta that that rating thing we, we, we just want to show them all right so we're gonna delete that meta query so we can show all of them again so when some here's the question you have to ask yourself when somebody comes to your movies page, okay, what do you want them to see? You want them probably to see all the movies, right? Okay, well, so you got posts, you have movies, and then do you want them to be ordered in a certain way? Do you want them to be sorted? Well, if it's like a database of movies, then maybe let's just say title ascending, right? So it's just in alphabetical order, right? And that's it. So that's pretty much all we do. So what we have here is we have a little loop and we have our movie archive, right? And this is our new movie archive. So if we come back over here to our movies and we refresh, we're gonna say, mm, why didn't that why didn't that change? I thought we created an archive. I thought we I thought we did this. Uh, it didn't change though, Mark. What's going on? Well, I'm gonna tell you something specific. And I I purposefully am doing this one way in Bricks because Bricks kind of has like an extra feature, which I can talk about in a second. But if you are doing this anywhere else, most of the time when you create a template, you need to set where that template is actually going to be like used and rendered at, okay? It does make the most sense that way. It's a lot easier to handle and manage that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh this and I'm gonna come back over here while this is refreshing to go to Bricks for a second. If you're in Bricks specifically, if you're a specific Bricks user, then there's a template section and there's disabled default templates. This is, I think, off by default. So like it's your, the default templates are enabled. So if you do something like we did there, it may just automatically work for you. If you're having trouble, play around with this setting to see what the case is. But but you can kind of see here, it's like select this to disable this behavior, make sure to set template conditions instead. Um, you can do it either way. But again, for the purposes of, the video, of this video, I'm turning it off because I want to show you what you have to do in most builders. Okay, so let's go back to our template. So again, we created a little template here, a little design where it says our new movie archive, and it has uh, just a, a full query of all of the movies, right? So if we had more information here, we'd see a lot of movies and da da da, whatever, right? So if we come back into our settings, and again, this is in different things. As soon as you click, as soon as you are editing, as an example, again, I use Elementor because I came from Elementor. If as soon as you click publish on a template, the first thing it's going to ask you is where do you want to put it? That's the first thing. Well, those settings and bricks are right here in template settings. And what you want to do is you want to add condition and you want to add uh, like where you want to put it. And again, depending on the builder, but the idea is you want to put it in post type. Well, actually you want to put it in um, archive and then specifically archive, uh, po archive post type, right? And then what archive do you want to put it in? Like what archive, what, ar what post types archive do you want to show this like this? And then you would say movies. Okay, so now I'm gonna refresh this first because we didn't do anything. Then I'm gonna press save. Then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna refresh it now and boom. So here's what we've done. I know a lot of clicking there, a lot of different things. High level what we did. When we created our archive via ACF and we turned it on, it had a default like just like a standard archive little template there with the with the um, just the, the archives heading and the and the posts. 
I know this doesn't look like much, but now what you have the power to do is to create your own archive page. And it's always going to be at this, right? This movies, right? It's always gonna be at this movies thing. And I'll explain to you in a second what that means is, but, but that's what we did. We create, we turned on the archive. We made sure that the post type had an archive available. We created an archive template and we set that archive template to dynamically display for the movies archives. Now, the one other thing is that this is like the, the, the full movies archive. This is the archive at the highest level. There could be other pieces which we could get into. There's taxonomies and all that sort of stuff like we talked about. But at the highest level, this is way better in a lot of ways than managing like a separate page and dealing with it in that regard um, for most cases. Okay. Hopefully you're with me. If you're not, leave a question down below. I will try my best to answer it. But let's talk about like how the singles play into this now, okay? Because I was unable to, exp to appropriately describe this to you until this moment because we didn't really have it available to us, all right? And I need to make one adjustment before we do so. So if we come back in here, if you were looking at this, right, if these had pictures and everything like that, you'd want to click into accept Inception, perhaps, right? Like, let's say that you have to get to a page like this, that is a single of Inception, you need to be able to go to a page and then click Incept, like, you know, go to an archive, click the ar the Inception little uh, post, and then go into it. So the one thing we need to change is we need to go to our title here just to make this easy on ourselves and link this to um, a thing. And this is... This is actually a really good example because the, the other question is, okay, well, in our archive, like in our little in our little block here, we added dynamic data, right? So we added like this is dynamic, this is dynamic, this is dynamic. That's our that's our loop item, if you will, and then each one of these is a part of the loop, right? So that was dynamic. But the other thing that we can add that can be dynamic is like links, for instance. And again, different ha builders handle this differently, but in the title down here. Uh, if we're, you know, we're editing this piece, which is ultimately affecting every single one on here, we can go to dynamic data down here and we can say, uh, select the dynamic data that we want. So this is the link, right? So what do we want the link to be dynamically set as? We want the, the link to be dynamically set as, as the post link or the post URL. Okay. So watch what that did. We press save. We come back out here. Notice I can't click on these right now. We click on reload. And I want you to notice what's happening. If we look at the very bottom left of the screen, I know it's tiny, but what does it say? It says slash movies slash inception when I hover over inception. Interesting. When I come to Pulp Fiction, same thing. Movies slash Pulp Fiction, The Dark Knight, same thing. That is being dynamically generated because we set the link of each one of these, you know, right? Like we had our little our little um, card situation here or our, our loop item. We set the link of this to be dynamic dynamic data when we inserted the post URL. The post URL is because we created a custom post type. We have a post called Inception, which is really a movie, right? But again, we, we have to understand the, the difference there. And then we created, we put the link in there as the dynamic data. So now every single time that you use that and you, and you try that, it's going to go to a different page. So if we click on Inception, there's not, we're not going to see anything. We'll talk to you. We'll, I'll talk to you about that in a second. But what these actually are, even though there's nothing here, you can see in the URL bar, they're changing. These are the singles, okay? And the reason we don't have any is because we don't have a single template yet. But don't worry, that's going to be easy. And then you're going to be, you know, you might be wondering, oh, well, I'm going to have to make, am I going to have to make a bunch of pages and singles or whatever? No, no. You're going to make one single template and the same thing is going to happen. All the information is going to get populated on those different pages, okay? And while we're here, I will show you one more thing. This is the reason that I kind of, I like to use the whole, the whole plural thing, even though there's other ways to do it is because I really like the way that these URLs end up looking. So you can have slash movies, right? And then you have slash movie, movie slash inception, right? The other way to do this would be like if this was movies and then this might say movie slash inception. You could do it that way. Some other things do it that way. You would just change some settings, but it just depends on what you're kind of looking for as far as like the actual URL structure and things like that on your on your website, which is slightly outside the scope of this video, but I'm trying to explain it as much as possible so you can get some different ideas, okay? This is meant to be a beginner's guide to more or less, right? So we're just, I don't wanna to overwhelm too much. All right, so now we have our archive, we have our singles, but we have nothing on our singles. Well, Mark, how do we, how do we create a single template? Very similar to how we created the archive. We go to templates, we go to add new, we come down here to single, 
and we say, in this case, we'll say movies single or something, however you want to label it. We will publish that and we'll press edit with bricks. Very important that you set the proper type though in whatever you're doing. If it's Elementor, it's going to pop up at first and you have to pick it. You have to make sure that you're clicking archive, you're clicking single. Um, and also some builders might say like single post or single page or something. I know I've seen that in Elementor in the past. We are working with posts. Make sure that you are understanding that and working with those things. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do again, we are, what are we doing? What are we doing? We are creating a single template. This is like the, the layout basically that all of our singles for movies in this case that we're going to do are using. Okay. So again, super high level. We can go into this. We can bring in a heading. Also, I'll talk about this real quick. You see how it says single here and it has post title and metadata and all this sort of stuff. Those are cool. You can use those, but I wouldn't recommend them. The reason is, let's just show you. Post title is a really good example. We are working on a single. What is, if we look at this and we look at this, right? This is more or less what we would be creating here. These are the pa these are the types of web pages. These are the, t the types of things here, the layout that we would be creating. We're not going to create this whole thing, but this is a single, right? On over on IMDB, more or less. And this is another single. And you can see they look very, very similar. Just the content itself is different, the data. So what an example, kind of going back to this over here, right, is what is one of the things that is absolutely going to be on the single page? It's going to be the title, which is why the post title is staring you right in the face here. Okay. Now, if we put the post title up here, um, this is good. This is fine. But the problem is that I don't like doing this. The reason I don't like doing this is because I want more control over what this is. This is just a post title element, right? And it doesn't, I mean, like I have a little bit of control here for sure. Like, you know, I have some, some stuff here or whatever, but I don't have the, I don't have the ability to name it whatever I want or add things or do whatever. So what I like to do instead, and some, again, some builders are different, but I just like to add a heading. So I'll add a heading. Okay. And it should be like obviously an H1 and all that, but we're not worried about that right now, but like the post title and heading, there's a difference. There's a difference there in, in as far as what you get. Um, it's different strokes for different folks. I'm going to keep it as heading just for now because it gives me more control at this level. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean, because we can, we're going to delete I am heading the text there, and we're going to insert some dynamic data and we're going to insert specifically the post title. So you see what I did there? I was like, I took, instead of taking a very specific element, I took a more like a uh, flexible element, just a very specific, you know, very standard heading. And I was able to inject the dynamic data that I wanted. So ultimately this kind of gives me a lot better, um, you know, a lot better, um, just instance of like kind of what we're, what we're talking about, what we're doing here. So it's all going to make sense in a second. So we have our heading and that is set to be the post title, right? And then underneath that, we can kind of just say, uh, we'll just throw in another, um, basic text. We don't have too much data in here, so it is what it is. Uh, underneath, we can say basic text, and we'll get rid of this. And we will say just the, what do we want that text to be? We'll just say the release year, for instance, right? Or we'll say the rating. Rating's fine, okay? So what has that done for us? That is, this is a single template. This is going to be our post title ultimately, but it's going to be using a heading as going to dynamically bring in our post title. This is going to be our rating. It's going to dynamically bring in that. If we go back over to Pulp Fiction and we refresh, what's going to happen? Nothing. The reason, we're, the reason is I'm trying to drill this into your head is that a lot of times you're going to have to set this thing up yourself as far as like show it. You're only going to have to set it up once, but you created this template. You have to go to settings. You have to go to template settings. You have to go to conditions. You have to go to add condition. You have to click in here. You have to say, uh, uh, for post type in this case, that's how they handle the singles. And you have to say for movies, okay? Post type movies. This means that for every single movie, you're gonna have this single template. You're gonna press save. You're gonna come back over here to Pulp Fiction. You're gonna press refresh. And now you have Pulp Fiction R. And did you have to do all this? Did you have to like manage all these pages independently to get these singles here? See these singles? Did you have to, did you have to manage, did, did I have to write, did I have to make three pages and duplicate stuff and all that sort of shit? No, I did not. I'm using custom post types. I'm using archive templates. I'm using single templates and I'm getting all of this stuff dynamically generated for me beautifully. Okay. If you've ever done a blog, you kind of might know a little bit about how this, this works, but expanding this and being able to actually utilize it in more of a, 
you know, a custom variety is just absolutely incredibly powerful. And again, more people need to know about dynamic data in WordPress. So this is this is the concept here. So as far as archives and singles go, I think that's a pretty decent overview of it. Now I will say high level real quick is that if you just go back in here, we're not going to do too much with these right now. But if you go back in here and you go to template settings and conditions, you can see that there's a ton of other conditions, there's entire website, there's front page, there's search results, error page terms, individual, there is more things that you can kind of do here. Okay, there's more things, right? There's a lot, lot more different things in bricks. And there's a lot more different things in um, like within WordPress in general, the way that it all works. Okay. But the point is that this is the state, this is literally like the standardized setup for the for a couple of those things. And then you can build off of from there. 